The struggles from Tropical Storm Michael still very real for many people. Tonight, a Yorktown family is looking for a new place to live after a tree fell onto the mobile home they rented. The tree split the home in two, destroying many of their possessions. The community now is rallying to help the mother, father, and three young children. Robert Boyd has the story. Well, I'm in Jennifer Washington's living room, which did survive the storm, but take a walk with me down this hallway. As you can see, as you enter this master bedroom, well, it did not survive the storm. Take a look at this tree and keep in mind her one year old son was in here just two minutes before it came crashing down. It's been almost a week, yet the tree that landed on top of Jennifer Washington's mobile home is still lodged across the master bedroom. I think if my son was in that room, Two minutes longer, he would have been underneath this tree. Jennifer says she was in the living room with her two other children, a two-year-old and two-month-old, when she heard the branches snapping. Something's coming down and I don't know where it's coming from. Jennifer and her boyfriend, Adrian, gathered all three children on the couch. I grabbed my daughter and my son and I got down and I had them underneath me like this. And beside me was Adrian and he had our son underneath him also. And not even three minutes later, we heard the tree breaking into our home. Jennifer wasn't sure whether they should run for their lives or hunker down and pray. It just happened so fast. When that tree fell, first thought was, let's get out. We can't grab nothing, let's go. Because I was scared something else was about to fall on this, this trailer. Fortunately, no other trees fell on their home, but the one that did definitely left a trail of destruction. We've lost electronics, we've lost all our clothes, the baby's clothes are gone, everybody lost basically everything. Jennifer, who is now living with her kids out of a motel, alerted her second family, who work with her at IHOP, about the near-death experience, and the manager immediately sprang into action. Money started pouring on. She put a donation box in front of the register where people check in and check out. People have been donating clothes, toys. In less than a week, IHOP has helped raise $2,500. She says that kind of support for a waitress that's only been on the job for six months is unbelievable. She says that money will go toward hopefully finding a new home. I'm more than blessed for the, the community because we don't really know anybody. So for people to come from all over the place beyond Yorktown to help us is a blessing. In Yorktown, Robert Boyd, 13 News Now. Tonight, the Virginia Beach City Manager is acknowledging that the resort city can do better in showing support for minority-owned businesses. The results of a year-long disparity study were presented to council last night. Out of more than $1 billion in city contracts, just 19% of that went to businesses owned by women and minorities. The goal is for the city to increase that to 25%. City Manager Dave Hansen wrote a letter today saying Virginia Beach is committed to be a diversified and welcoming city, and the staff is already working on new approaches for future contracting opportunities. Tonight, the Portsmouth Commonwealth Attorney's Office says it's finished reviewing the shooting of Deon Trace Ward. A Portsmouth police officer shot Ward last October after responding to an armed burglary. The 19-year-old later pleaded guilty to breaking into a house and stealing hundreds of dollars worth of jewelry while a family was at church. The Commonwealth Attorney's Office says they are still considering their next steps in the case against Ward. Well, new at 11, targeting Target. Yeah, the retail chain. An Ocala, Florida man will spend 40 years in prison for his plan to blow up 10 Target stores from Florida to New England, including some here in Virginia. Tonight, the ATF on how the man was stopped and the bizarre reason he wanted to do it. Adhesive would stick and it's connected to a wire. That wire would pull the circuit, circuit of a music card. When you pull up, when you open a music card, it closes the circuit and it completes the circuit and the device, the bomb, would explode. Homemade bombs designed with a single purpose, profit. ATF Special Agent Dwayne Kruger investigated the case. I thought of a six-year-old girl wanting macaroni and cheese for dinner that night, going to the store shelf on Target and picking up the macaroni and cheese to try to give to her mom and blowing up. Mark Charles Barnett purchased somewhat random items like musical greeting cards, pasta, and stuffing mix to build his homemade bombs. There was no time delay, so whoever picked up that device would have blown up. Barnett bought the items to make the explosives at an Ocala Hobby Lobby and as seen here at a Walmart. He was clever. 
He wore gloves so he wouldn't leave his fingerprints. According to court documents, Barnett hired a man to place bombs in 10 Target stores from the southeast to Virginia and North Carolina to the northeast in places like New York and Massachusetts. The payoff was $10,000. So how would that plan make Barnett rich? He wanted Target stock to drop. The more Target stock dropped, the more money Mark Barnett made. But here's where it all went wrong. Barnett's partner in crime was on probation, realized he was in over his head and told his probation officer of the plot and became the ATF's confidential source. Agent Kruger says, had the source not come forward, someone could have been hurt for one purpose. The quote, I believe, is, if people have to die for me to make money, so be it. Barnett spent $16,000 on Target stock. If he pulled this off, he saw himself making as much as $400,000. Barnett couldn't do the job himself because he was on probation for a 1992 rape, kidnapping, and theft case. He was supposed to wear an ankle monitor until 2023. The ATF has a reward out in connection with a burglary in Toano. The agency is working with the Firearms Trade Group to offer a $5,000 reward to anyone with information leading to an arrest. Someone broke into Toano General Store on Richmond Road last week and stole guns, ammo, and money. Anyone with a tip can contact the ATF James City County Police or the crime line. Also new tonight, Senator Cree Deeds has settled a lawsuit following his son's suicide. Deeds and his family will get $950,000. The lawmaker sued Michael Gentry, a former mental health evaluator. Deeds says his son Gus was improperly denied treatment after he tried to have him committed in 2013. You may remember Deed's son returned home and stabbed his father before shooting and killing himself. Since then, Deeds has pushed for state mental health reforms. Washington Post writer Jamal Khashoggi's latest column published tonight. It's about the muted international response to abuses against journalists by governments in the Middle East. He was last seen entering Saudi Arabia's consulate in Istanbul more than two weeks ago. ABC's Maggie Ruley reports a friend of Khashoggi feared for his own safety. New details are now emerging about the disappearance of Washington Post journalist Jamal Khashoggi. Khashoggi, a frequent critic of the Saudi regime, telling his fiance to call two people if there was any trouble. One, his close friend, Torin Kazlachi, who spoke with ABC's senior foreign correspondent, Ian Panel. There have been repeated claims that there is proof uh, that Mr. Khashoggi was killed that there is an audio recording. Security officials said they do have audio tapes, he says, and they know all the details of what happened that day. He says the tapes reveal when Khashoggi walked into the consulate, he was given a document to sign but refused. He was then killed. The New York Times reporting Turkish authorities say audio tapes indicate a hit squad beheaded and dismembered him. Turkish investigators are now pouring over the consulate grounds and officials there released to a Turkish newspaper the images of 15 Saudis, they say, traveled to Istanbul the day Khashoggi went missing. The Times reports several of those suspects have ties to the Saudi crown prince, including Mayor Abdulaziz Mutreb, allegedly in Istanbul the day Khashoggi went missing. Seen here in Boston within a few feet of the crown prince in March. One month later, both men in Houston and then together in Madrid. As the investigation continues, the president insists he's not giving cover to Saudi Arabia. They're an important ally, but I want to find out what happened where is the fault? And we will probably know that by the end of the week. The Washington Post publishing an opinions page online Wednesday night featuring an article filed by Khashoggi right before he disappeared. In it, he discusses the need for a free press in the Middle East. Maggie Bruley, ABC News, New York. White House counsel Don McGahn has returned to private life. This was McGahn's last day serving in the White House. President Trump announced in August that McGahn would leave after the confirmation of Brett Kavanaugh to the Supreme Court. McGahn also was the main point of contact inside the White House for Robert Mueller's investigation into Russian meddling in the 2016 election. Looking ahead, the newest Virginia class submarine will be christened this week. Former second lady and sponsor of the ship, Jill Biden, will smash a bottle of sparkling wine across the Delaware's bow on Saturday. Saturday. 
You're looking at uh, Kiel laying video two years ago. Once it's christened, the sub officially becomes USS Delaware. Another Biden also will be in town this week. Former Vice President Joe Biden will visit the United Steelworkers Union office. He plans to talk to those who work at Newport News Shipyard. His visit comes ahead of the critical midterm elections. The Steelworkers Union backed the Obama-Biden ticket in 2008 and again in 2012.